Welcome. In video number one, I describe briefly the two different parts of your ministry exam. This is video number two of a series of seven. We will focus on C1 today. The objective of the video is to clarify the ministry rubric for the C1 evaluation and to share tips and tricks to succeed in your final exam. First, I want to talk about the ministry rubric your teacher will use to evaluate you. When we look at this, it looks overcomplicated. So I want to simplify it, to clarify it, to make it simpler for you. If you really want to see it, click on the link in the description below. In the grid, you will find four criteria, five points for each criterion. You need a grade of 12 out of 20 to get a passing grade. And it's an individual result, even though you're in a group discussion. Let's look at the criterion participation. To be at the top of the grid, you need three things to get five on five. You need to be proactive, you need to ask for details, and you need to lead the discussion. But what does it really mean? Well, you need perfect balance between talking to the others, listening at the right moment, and asking clarification, and making sure everyone talks, but you're on top of the game. You're talking with the others very efficiently. You get a four on five. When you are proactive, you are asking for details, but you're waiting a little bit more. You're just looking at the game, but you're not participating as much as a five on five. And then at the end, you get three on five. If you interact with the others, but you don't participate as much, you just wait for the others to finish and you're just, oh, is it my turn? Oh, you interact, but not so much. So you still pass because the main point of participation is interaction. So you need to interact with the others. You fall into a D and an E criteria. So what we're talking about is two on five and one on five. When you're always waiting for your turn. You don't participate unless someone is saying, oh, hey, you, what's your opinion on this? That's waiting too much. Or when you talk with the others, the only thing you have to say is like, oh, I agree with you. Oh, uh, yeah, that's good. Yes, no, and you don't add anything to the discussion. And finally, the E, obviously, well, if you're just there, silent, <laughs> or you're switching to another language, you won't pass the participation criteria. So if we recap the best tips and tricks for participation, what you have to remember, proactivity is a must. And remember, it means a good balance between listening to the others and talking at the right moment. Asking for details. Don't keep it to yourself if you don't understand something one of your classmates said. And this is important too. Talk directly to your classmate. Don't talk to your teacher. Your teacher will not intervene, so there's no point talking to that person. Okay, let's talk about the criterion content. To be at the top of the grid, remember, five on five. Well, you need to be prepared. And to be prepared means that you read the preparation booklet and that you find some detailed information inside of it, that you know the topic. But it's not only knowing the topic. You need enriched content. And enriched content means that you did your research, that you tried to look beyond the subject and you learned new things that you're bringing in into the discussion. Four on five, which is very good. You're using more examples, examples from your own life, from what you saw around you, but you don't have that much enriched content. You do ask for clarification, so you're interested, you're Curious. So that is very good for the content criteria. Three on five. The passing grade. Your ideas are mostly superficial. It means you know the topic, 
but you did not dig into it. You did not try to learn more about it. If I give you a very basic example, let's say this, the topic is about drugs, and you say, drugs are bad. Okay, but this is superficial. You need to put more details into it. You need to talk, I don't know, maybe about the consequences of drugs to get more points. When you fall into the D and E criteria, so remember two on five and one on five. Well, it means you're repetitive or that your message is incomplete or that you're just saying, oh, this is good, but you don't explain anything. One on five, just like the participation criteria, you're silent. If you don't finish your sentences, if we don't understand what you say, or if you switch to another language. All right. If I want to give you content tips and tricks, we have to focus on a few things. First thing first, the preparation booklet. Really important to study what's inside of it. You will get many different texts on a topic. So it's your job to learn more about it. And one good way to get enriched content is to talk about current events. Recently, we've heard about a lot of phone scams, people receiving texts, receiving, receiving phone calls with scams. So that could be interesting to bring into the discussion depending on the topic, or maybe the subject is about teen drivers, and you read an article about the fact that they are a catastrophe. It's possible. The most important thing to remember about content is that you're bringing in details, and you're listening to what the others say, and you're adding to their opinion. If someone is talking about the voting age, well, you could bring in the fact that you got your driver's license at 16 year old. It means you're mature enough to drive, while maybe you're mature enough to vote too. So, remember, reading the preparation booklet is really important because the content criterion proves that you go beyond the obvious. What do you think fluency means? Is it A, how natural you sound? B, how confident you are? C, how complete your message is? Or D, all of the above? If you answer D, all of the above, you are correct. Watch the next part of the video to understand what fluency is. All right, let me explain the criterion fluency. To get a five out of five. A little bit high, but let's deal with it. You need your message to feel natural. You need to be confident. It needs to be clear from one end to the other. When you get a B grade, we're talking about four out of five. Your message is still very clear, but you're hesitating a little bit more. Nothing major, because we understand your message from the beginning to the, uh, to the end without any problems. You get a C grade, three out of five. Well, then your message is starting to be a little bit choppy and some incomplete sentences. It means you're pausing for a little bit too long, maybe two seconds, every now and then. So your message is still clear. We understand what you mean, but you're stopping too much. Then we see the D and E grades. We're talking about two on out of five and one out of five. Your hesitations are present every single sentence. It means your words are out of place. We don't understand all the time what you mean. And sometimes if you're silent or you're using other languages, you will fail the criterion fluency. Okay. If I give you fluency tips and tricks, I need to start with something super important. <sighs> Breathing. A lot of people do not think about it and they're stressed out. Breathing slowly will help you calm down and realize that you're able to do it. After that, sometimes it might feel counterintuitive to pause. 
during the discussion, you're like, okay, and you, what do you think? And you breathe, you pause and think, you formulate your message inside your head, you structure your ideas. The only problem with this little tip is if you pause for too long, people might wonder what's happening. But don't hesitate to do it from time to time. The last trick that I can give you, don't be afraid to ask for help. It's okay to forget things, but it's not okay to switch languages. So you need to stick to English and ask for help. Use your strategies. How do I say this or that? Using strategies will prove that you're trying to keep your message clear from one end to the other. Your fluency will be proved that way. We're up to the fourth criterion, accuracy. A top A grade, five out of five. It means your message is clear with only minor errors. If any, it's possible that you're not making any errors. The B grade, four out of five. It means your message is clear but your teacher notices some errors here and there. Maybe verbs, maybe different little words, nothing major. And a C grade, three out of five. Your message is understood, but your teacher needs to think a little bit more to really know what you wanted to say. So you still pass three out of five, but it's not as clear. Then you have the D and the E grade. So we're at the two out of five and one out of five. So what we see there is that your message contains considerable errors and that your teacher needs considerable interpretation to understand what you really wanted to say. So you're failing at two out of five. And just like the other criteria, you get one out of five if you're just silent or you switch to other languages. All right, let me give you a few accuracy tips and tricks. If you're unsure of your sentences, simplify your message. It will be clearer for everyone around the table and it will be better for you. And if you're unsure of how to say things, rephrase, reformulate your sentence to make it simpler for you, but for everyone else at the same time. I mentioned it a few times already, but do not switch to any other languages. It will result in a failure. You don't want that. Remember the secret. Read. Pause and think. Structure your thoughts. Interact with people around you. All those strategies will help you succeed in your C1 final evaluation. Be sure to check out the next videos in the series to learn more about the C3 written evaluation.